Well, you do find that recently in the, in the Muslim world, this has emerged. This really was not a non-issue for over a thousand years when it came to the Mawlid of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his family. Wherever you'd go in the world, you'd find that that would be a week of celebration. Mm -hmm. And irrespective of whether you came from a Shia or a Sunni background, you are raised honoring the week of his birth, honoring the day of his birth. And the honoring, of course, has different methods. Naturally, you find that there would be some who would honor the day of the birth of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon his family, out of recognition mm -hmm. that it's a day in which God's blessings were sent upon mankind. In the Quran, there are certain days that are called the days of Allah. If you look within the Holy Quran, it's mentioned even in the story of Moses. Remember the days of Allah. Remind them of the days of Allah. These days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are days in which there was immense blessings which were sent down on the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his family. So with these days, days of remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his blessings, you find that the greatest blessings for every Muslim is the day of the birth of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, and his family. If you went to the Ottoman Empire or the Seljuk Empire or the Safawid Empire or the Boyid Empire or the Fatimid Empire, irrespective of whether they have inclinations to Shia, Sunni, Sufi, Ash'ari, whatever their inclinations, the Mawlid was a joyous occasion. Now you found that it was only in the last hundred and 5200 years that suddenly with the writings of the likes of Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab mm -hmm. that there were people who began to doubt whether this would be a day of celebration so be it in the opinion of some that the Holy Prophet peace be upon him, his family was born on the 12th of Rabi al -Awwal, or in the opinion of others that he was born on the 17th of Rabi al -Awwal, everybody in one way or the other would gather at each other's houses mm -hmm do their dhikr of the Holy Prophet's name and the name of his family, constant salawat on Muhammad and al-Muhammad, exchange gifts with one another. And it's interesting how that movement of Abdul Wahhab, which he felt was a reformist movement, is a movement that now has permeated into certain circles who constantly talk about the fact that the birth of the Holy Prophet and celebration of it, they call it a bid'ah. They say that the celebration of the birth of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, is a bid'ah. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they say the Prophet himself did not celebrate his own birth. If you want to open the door of bid'ah, you want to open the door of innovations, I'm surprised by those who want to open that door. Because if you want to open that door, there are many innovations that came from people who lived after the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his family, on areas which were either prohibited by the Prophet, they allowed, mm -hmm. or areas which were allowed by the Prophet, they prohibited.